two of my absolute favorite, most powerful superfoods in existence, without a doubt, are spirulina and chlorella. So I brought on my friend, Catherine Arnston, who specializes in this exact topic. We had a wonderful discussion on the podcast. She delivered so much value, and I wanted to share some of that in this little clip with you right here. Uh, so enjoy this clip. Also, I highly recommend checking out the full length podcast by clicking the link in the description down below. Enjoy. You mentioned one of the compounds, the blue pigment in spirulina, which is my personal favorite phytochemical. And I think it's probably, I think there's a, a good case for that to be arguably the most healthful, beneficial uh, phytochemical known to man. So let's talk about, first of all, I'm curious if you agree with me. Oh, to, sure. To talk about phycocyanin first. Yeah. What, yeah. what some of the research has shown as far as the benefits of that and the benefits of spirulina more broadly. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and it's, um, and here's the thing, um, even with 60,000 studies on spirulina, there's still so much yet to learn. And, you know, one of the reasons I want to be successful is that, you know, that we could hopefully fund some of that research because, um, there's other pigments in there. Of course, there's beta carotene. It has the highest beta carotene, um, but we're still learning what these things do. So let's let's look at that gorgeous blue phycocyanin. First of all, it's a water-based pigment, and I mentioned that because when we get to talk about chlorella, I'll point out the benefits of the fact that chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. So they do completely different things in your body, but. One of the amazing features of phycocyanin is it has what's called anti-angiogenesis properties. That's a mouthful, I know, but what that means is that it, it intercepts, um, well, let me back up, when, when tumors and, and cancers, well, they basically hijack your blood vessels to, and reroute them to feed the cancer cells uh, to keep them growing. And phycocyanin, for whatever reason, has the, and that's called angiogenesis when that happens. Uh, phycocyanin has the ability to prevent that, to intercept that. And I didn't even know that until about five years ago. And there, there's a, an association, a very large association right here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, called the Angiogenesis Society. It's angiogen.org. And they were having their global conference and they called us and they said, you know, did you know that your spirulina uh, can prevent cancer by this angiogenesis, uh, anti-angiogenesis process. And I said, no, and they invited us to come to their conference for free um, because they felt so you know, strongly about it. And this is an association that's funded by Bill Gates and um, Bill Clinton and all the bills. So pretty powerful stuff. So that's number one. Everybody um, with the name Bill gathers together. To yeah, fund yeah, all the bills. <laughs> In fact, the, including the dollar bills. <laughs> the bills bring their bills. <laughs> Um, another pretty powerful one, and again, you know, I, I, I point out that I'm not a, I'm not a medical professional, and anything I say is not to be construed as medical advice. Um, I only reference the science that I have read. So that being said, the science shows, and we have examples of the sources for this on our website, that um, the again, phycocyanin has this remarkable ab ability to intercept the COVID virus, so it cannot enter your blood vessels. And the way it does that, we've all seen pictures of the COVID virus with those little prongs that stick out. And those prongs attach to uh, your cells. And the way it enters your body is through something called an ACE2 receptor cell. And most of those are in your nose, your throat, your lungs. Um, and so this phycocyanin sits on top of the ACE2 receptor cell. It's sort of like a shield. <laughs> it's like a super, super uh, hero. And it prevents that prong from the COVID virus from attaching. So it can't get into your cell and it just slides through. So, um, and, and so what's happened is that the University of Pittsburgh uh, pharmacology department has actually developed a nose spray based on this that is being used as a vaccine for, for COVID. Uh, so pretty impressive stuff. And of course it's a, a nose spray because that's where so many of your ACE2 receptor cells are. So, so they're, they're, they're using, first of all, I'm glad you brought this up. I was gonna ask you about the, if you knew about the research uh, yeah. of spirulina and COVID, I'm glad you do. And um, so you're saying, I, I, I didn't know about this nasal spray that you're 
talking yeah. about. So I you're saying they're that. using what? They're using phycocyanin in the nasal spray? Well, they're using algae, and I have to believe that it's got the phycocyanin in it. I, I, have to, I haven't read the actual papers, um, but that's one of maybe a dozen different um, uh, scientific uh, you know, groups that are pursuing algae as a, as a vaccine. They've, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Canada and there's the University of Western Ontario where I did my MBA. They have a, even a COVID test that's based on algae, but uh, Israel, Italy, um, lots in Asia, they have developed lots of vaccines all based on algae. Um, and it, you know, I, again, I don't have all of the science. Some of it's referenced on our website. If we have a whole section, a whole drop down. If you go to energybits.com up at the top, it'll say science about COVID. And uh, I've, there's at least 10 or 12 references on the different science. We explain what COVID is and how it enters your body. Uh, and I, we can go deeper into why algae can help not only protect you, but can also um, help you if you do have it for various metabolic activities that occur. And it's fascinating, it's so fascinating. But once you understand it, you go, well, that makes sense. And that, that's the beautiful thing about truth. It just makes sense. <laughs> right. Well, there's also research showing, uh, you know, well, let me let me jump back one step for, for listeners, which is that. Uh, one of the big problems, one of the things that really kills you with COVID is not just the virus itself, it's your immune system overreacting, over yes. responding yeah, to the cytokines, it yeah. and, and to the damage that the virus creates in your body. And so yeah. you get a cytokine storm and right. people with poor immune function um, in, in most cases due to poor metabolic health, poor nutrition and lifestyle habits, which is a major contributor to that. Uh, cr creates that propensity for the immune system to overreact and to get a cytokine score. One of the, the biggest uh, cytokines that's involved in that is something called TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. And uh, it's a major pro-inflammatory cytokine. And there's research showing spirulina leads to profound uh, levels of reduction, 70% plus levels of reduction yeah. in TNF alpha. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Well, the other cool thing is we're talking about COVID and I wasn't going to because we're so sick of it, right? Um, <laughs> It's not just a, a lung disorder, and as you mentioned, the inflammatory reaction. It's a blood disorder. You'll find that most people who are dying die from a heart disease or heart attack. And here's what happens. The COVID virus in, in, invades your blood and it injects itself to in your hemoglobin and it kicks out the iron atom. Remember, iron is what carries oxygen in your blood. So now the iron atom is no longer in your hemoglobin. Instead, the virus is there. So as your blood is circulating, it can no longer carry oxygen uh, to your cells and to your major organs. And one of the first ones that, that um, uh, gives out is your, is your heart. And, but it's worse than that. So when the iron is kicked out of the hemoglobin, it doesn't disappear. It's still in your blood, but it is no longer protected in the hemoglobin. I, I, I compare hemoglobin to bubble wrap. It, you know, when, it, when the iron is in there, it's, it's you know, like bubble wrap, it's, it's carefully protected. Because if you've ever gone to a dock and you see things that are rusting, that's oxidation. And so when the iron is kicked out of the hemoglobin, it's now still in your blood vessel, but it's a rogue cell and it's causing, uh, 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 oxidation wherever it goes. So it's causing damage. It's like a, you know, it's a, like a drunk at a bar. It's just like out of the way. And so even with the cytokine in, inflammatory in, inflammation, this rogue, um, um, iron atom is causing even more damage because it's no longer protected in the, um, in the hemoglobin. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. And one of the reasons I like, uh, you know, algae so much, and I don't have science about this, I will, you know, just, tell you that. Um, but because algae is so, uh, um, is so alkaline, it has so much iron in it. I'm thinking that you think it would help restore the iron atom in the blood. And also the other thing is when, whether it's viruses, COVID virus, any virus, cancer, any disease is acidic. And um, our, our bodies and mother nature are so, so, so intelligent. The hemoglobin has a negative charge around it. You know, if you've ever held magnets up, you know, yeah, you know how they repel one another? Well, your hemoglobin is the same way. It's sort of like a negative charge around it. And the reason for that is so that they don't clump in your blood, in your blood when they're traveling. And this allows them to A, be nice and round so they can carry the, ox the iron atom and carry oxygen. And so they don't clump. 
Mm -hmm. When the virus gets into your blood because it kicks out the iron atom and because it's acidic, it not only steals your, uh, it prevents your blood from carrying oxygen, it causes them to clump because now it's acidic. And they have found as they do any kind of, you know, um, with the cadavers of people who've died, they blood clump, clumping everywhere. And this is one of the reasons. So, so even, you know, fast forward or even just eliminating this whole COVID situation, and we're going to talk about this in a minute when we switch over to chlorella, uh, chlorophyll and your hemoglobin are virtually identical in chemical composition. And algae has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. Chlorella has twice as much as um, spirulina because spirulina has that second um, blue pigment that we just talked about. And the reason, the only difference is your hemoglobin has iron in the middle and chlorophyll has um, uh, the uh, um, magnesium in the middle, but it builds your blood. They've been giving using chlorophyll since the, you know, BC to help people with healing properties. They even gave it to the injured during World War II if they ran out of blood transfusions because they would it builds your blood. So if nothing else, I know we're stepping, you know, getting ahead of ourselves here about the different benefits of algae, but it, it builds your blood. And um, there, our food supply is so damaged. Our soils are so overcropped. There's no nitrogen in, or nutrients in the soil for the plants to have in them. And this CO2 is so damaged that they're finding plants have more sugar in them now. And I have all the science references to that too. So even if you ate a room full of arugula, you wouldn't get the same amount of chlorophyll as you would probably in a single serving of the spirulina tablets. So I call it efficient nutrition. Hey, this is Ari. I hope you enjoyed this little clip. And if you wanna to listen to the full length podcast, the link for that is down in the description below. Also, one more thing before you go, I wanna mention, in case you don't already know about it, our formula, Energenesis. This is an amazing product uh, that has multiple compounds in it that are scientifically proven in numerous studies to increase your energy levels not just by you know 3% or 5% or 10% by but by 30 or 40 or 50% in a very very short time frame so one of these compounds that I'll mention here is called NT factor phospholipid and it is a an extract of phospholipids that comes from lecithin and they extract the pure phospholipids from this things like phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, and many others. And these are the same uh, fatty acid compounds, phospholipid compounds, that compose our uh, cell membranes and mitochondrial membranes. And this specific patented formula has been shown actually to enter into the, the bloodstream uh, un, undigested, basically, without being broken down and denatured through the digestive process in the stomach and the intestines. It makes it into the bloodstream and actually makes it all the way to our cells and to our mitochondria, where it helps repair damaged mitochondrial membranes and facilitates our mitochondria functioning better. Now, all of that sounds like wonderful theory, uh, and it sounds like it could be beneficial, but the real test is, has it actually been studied and been proven to increase your energy levels? And the answer is yes, absolutely. There are numerous studies uh, outlined in a wonderful paper by the scientist, a scientist named Garth Nicholson uh, in a paper called Lipid Replacement Therapy. I highly recommend checking this out if you're interested in digging into the research. But this compound has been studied in the context of multiple different kinds of chronic fatigue. Uh, aging related chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, uh, obscure things like Gulf War illness and numerous studies in chronic fatigue syndrome. And there are studies showing that this has the capability. They've taken one study in fact actually showed that in elderly adults over the age of 65, it restored their mitochondrial health, which had deteriorated uh, heavily. It restored it to the level of healthy 29 year olds, believe it or not. And they've actually measured energy levels in these people. And all of these studies across the board show improvements in energy of at least 25% and typically more like 35 to 45% in just the span of between four to 12 weeks. That's how long all of these studies are, four to 12 weeks. They're showing dramatic, huge improvements 
in energy levels by helping to repair these mitochondrial membranes through this thing called lipid replacement therapy using, again, this patented form of a phospholipid extract called NT factor. This is just one of about 20 ingredients proven to benefit mitochondrial health that you'll find in my formula energenesis. So I strongly encourage you, if you are struggling with your energy levels, if you're dealing with chronic fatigue, go grab yourself a bottle or three of this or subscribe and save. Um, try it out. You are going to be blown away by the results. We get so many testimonials. We get so many emails from people talking about how this one thing has transformed their lives. So I cannot encourage you strongly enough to give this a shot. And it, let's say you buy three bottles, um, try out the first one, give it a month. And if you don't notice significant improvements, you can return the unopened bottles to us for a full refund. So give it a shot. I really think you're going to be blown away by the results. The formula is called Energenesis, and you can get it at theenergyblueprint.com or click the link below. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you again very soon.